So Tracy, what do we got coming in? Yeah, Dr. Boyer, sounds pretty sick. He's a 18 year old uh, motor vehicle crash victim, unrestrained driver. Um, sounds like he's a little unstable in the field. Heart rate is in the 120s, blood okay. pressure is 90 over 40. He's got an obvious uh, left femur fracture. Um, they have him in a hair traction splint. He's backboarded, collared. Um, they have him on some oxygen. It sounds like his O2 sats are in the 88 to 93 percent, and his GCS is placed. So minimally responsive, and they've got some oxygen going. They have oxygen. And one IV? One IV, uh, I think 18 in the right AC. All right. So it sounds like this guy is pretty injured. Uh, we're going to need to take care of a lot of things. It sounds like he had an airway problem. It sounds like he's in shock. So a couple quick things we need to do very quickly when he gets here is let's make sure that we got our airway stuff ready to go. It sounds like you need to be intubated. So we got everything we need. I got everything out. All right. And um, Betsy, it sounds like he's only got one IV. So when he arrives, what I'd like you to do is put in the second IV and on his other side that he doesn't have one. We'll get some blood out of that when we do it. Also, if you would call the lab and x-ray before he gets here, make sure they come and help us out. Uh, and Tracy, when uh, he gets here also, I'm going to look at his airway, and while I'm doing that, can you put him on a monitor and a blood pressure cuff? Yes, and let me know immediately what the vital signs are so we can go from there. And I guess the other thing we want to think about is this guy's probably bleeding a fair amount from the sounds of it, so let's notify the blood bank, and let's get the massive transfusion protocol on standby and okay. make sure that we uh, got that ready to go. Also sounds like this guy is a little too sick for us to keep here. Uh, so once we uh, figure out what's going on, let's get the trauma center on the phone because I'd like to talk to them and get him transferred, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Any questions? No. Right. Right, let's do it. This is Gary. He's 18 years old. He's an unrestrained driver in a single vehicle MBA into a tree. About 10 minute extrication. He's a GCS of about 8, has a head injury up here underneath the gauze and has an open femur fracture with some minor bleeding. This is motor vehicle collision yes, into a tree. Yes. Prolonged extrication. He's unrestrained. Unrestrained. And you said he has, he, he's got an obvious head injury. Obvious head injury. And an obvious uh, femur fracture. Open femur fracture. Okay. Completely. And that's all you see right now? The um, bruising to the left chest as well. And his last set of vitals? Blood pressure is 90 by pound. He has 120 times tap on the monitor. Respiratory rate is about 12. Right. It's clear bilaterally. Um, and he's in a response with us. Any other issues? Not that I know of. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, guys, this guy looks like he's got a lot of injuries, and let's, let's do this in a nice systematic fashion. We'll start with the ABCs. So, Tracy, uh, while I'm assessing the airway, I want you to put some, uh, some uh, leads on. Let's get a blood pressure. And, uh, Betsy, if you can come over here on this side and help me with the airway. Uh, looks like he's breathing about 20 times a minute. Sir, can you open your eyes? Sir, what's your name? Looks like he's not responsive at the moment. He's got some uh, obvious facial trauma. And it looks like he's uh, not breathing real well. He's a little bit blue. O2 sat 82%. O2 sat's 82%. So we're going to need to intubate him. So what I would like you to do, um, Betsy, is uh, let's, I want you to hold C-spine precautions here. I'm going to take the C-spine collar off. C-spine. And I'm going to put in an oral airway in here. See if we can get a little bit better. All right. Let's put this oral airway in. Let's go ahead and bag him here. Responsive. It looks like he's uh, going to need to be intubated. Do we have our intubation stuff ready? Everything's right behind you, ready to go. All right. Can you bag him here while I grab that? I got it. Can you come off for a second? Let me just take a look here. Looks like we got a little bit of blood in there. Let me suck that out. All right. Suction. Suction. All right. Good. Great. All right. Let me just take a peek here. Let me know if you want some cricoid. Yeah, a little cricoid pressure would be great. Thank you. All right. See his cords. Tubes going in. Great. Good color change. Good right. color change. All right. Let's get him hooked up to a ventilator. In the meantime, let's put the C-spine collar back on, protect the C-spine. All right. And let me take a listen to his lungs. Betsy, there's a little bit of bleeding there. Put some pressure on that if you would. Can we call for respiratory and a ventilator, please? Uh, i got good breath sounds on both sides. A little bit less on the left and the right. He's got some bruising on his left chest. So let's see what we got. His airway is taken. We've got him as intubated. His pulse ox has come up to 96%. What are our vital signs doing? Looks like his heart rate's 100 and 15, and his blood pressure is 90 over 40. All right. So it looks like he's a little bit in shock. Let's, uh, we've got airway and breathing taken care of. Is he bleeding anywhere actively? So he's bleeding down here on the leg. Uh, can we get some more help? Hey, Will, can you help us? Yep, go ahead. 
Dr. Boyer, would you like a second IV? Yes, let's start a second large bore IV and we'll hang normal saline. Uh, and how much IV is hopefully, yeah. put some pressure on that if you would please. Yep. You keep bagging, uh, start a second IV over here, Tracy, if you yes, would. Sir. And I think this guy's going to need some blood, so let's call the blood bank and get a uh, massive transfusion protocol going. Okay. All right. Uh, so we got control of the bleeding there, control of the bleeding there. Let me feel his pulses down here. I think his traction splint seems to be working. He's got good pulses here with some bleeding there. It looks like an open femur fracture. I don't see any obvious bleeding on his uh, chest. His abdomen is soft. His pelvis is not stable. I think he's got a pelvic fracture, so okay. you can have significant bleeding from there. Uh, so definitely this guy's going to need some blood, so let's make sure we get some blood products for him. Uh, in the meantime, let's expose the patient. Uh, does that bleeding seem to be taken care of there as you wrap that, Will? Yep, looks pretty good now. All right, can you go ahead and, uh, and get him exposed, take off the rest of his clothes there? Yep. And once we get him exposed, let's make sure we get some warm blankets to cover him back up so we don't get hypothermic. Let's do a disability exam. All right, sir, can you open your eyes? Blood is running. He opens his eyes to pain, that's a two. He's not, wasn't verbalizing, so that was a one. Let me see if he responds to painful stimuli. Well, he's localizing, so that's a uh, four. This guy looks like he's got a significant head injury, and we're going to need to get him to a neurosurgeon. In the meantime, let's keep oxygenating him. Uh, what's his blood pressure doing now? Looks like, let's see, it's coming, it's up to 105, systolic. Heart rate's down to 100. Uh, we also, I think we're going to need to wrap this uh, pelvis with a sheet. Can you grab a sheet for me there, Will? Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we uh, wrap this pelvis, and we're going to need to log roll him. So we got him hooked to a ventilator. Coming up. All right, this is going to be on your count. You count it down for us on the count of three. Secure one, two, and three. All right, let me get this backboard out. And I'm going to examine the spine here to make sure there's no step off. Feels like there's no step off here. Let's uh, do a rectal exam. I need some jelly for that. All right. All right. Uh, he's got good rectal tone. Uh, and uh, while I've got him up here on the side, let's put the x-ray plates in to get a chest and a pelvic x-ray. Watch the ID, sir. All right. And let's bring it back on your count again. Ready? One, two, and three. And one Can we call for x-ray, please? All right, we'd like a chest and a pelvis. Yes, sir. All right, guys, we've, uh, let's reassess what we've done so far. We've uh, done our ABCs. We've got him control, his airway control. We've assessed his breathing. He's got good breath sounds, a little bit of diminishment on the left-hand side. We know that he has a pelvic fracture and some bleeding from an open femur fracture. We've reduced that. We've got good pulses. He's also got some bleeding from his scalp and an obvious head injury. So this guy, clearly, we need to transfer him to a trauma center. So what I'd like to do at this juncture is uh, we'll take a look at those x-rays we shot. I want you to put an OG tube in because of concern for a head injury, and I want you to put a Foley catheter in in a moment here. And then what we'll do is reassess the patient. What are his vital signs right now? Currently his O2 set is 96%. His blood pressure is 110 over 64. Heart rate is 97. And we've given him how much fluids? 500 cc's of saline and one unit of pack, two units of pack cells. Two units of pack cells and a 500 cc of saline. So it sounds like we've stabilized him a little bit. We've got a, a, a sheet around his pelvis here. Uh, we're going get, to get him packaged up uh, for the trauma center. So Betsy, could you get the trauma center on the phone for me? I need to talk to them and arrange transport. And while we're doing that, we're going to do a detailed secondary survey. We're going to do a head-to-toe, fingers and tubes, every, and every orifice exam. We'll get him all packaged up to go. And, while you, and also, Betsy, could you make sure that the x-ray department makes copies of all of our x-rays so we can send them along? Tracy, it looks like we've got our x-rays back. Uh, we've got a chest here. Uh, looks like he's got some uh, rib fractures here on the left side and, uh, and some haziness. He's probably got a pulmonary contusion. And his pelvic film... Um, Oh, God, he's got an acetabular fracture, a pelvic fracture. Uh, that, that confirms, I think, what's, what we think is going on with his blood loss. Uh, let's get copies of these x-rays made and send them so we can send them on with the, to the uh, next hospital with him, okay? Dr. Brazell, hi. This is uh, Mark Boyer from uh, Mary Washington. i got a patient that I need to transfer you to you. Uh, it's a 18-year-old uh, young male who was involved in a high-speed motor vehicle collision. Off the, he ran his car off the road into a tree. Uh, there was significant damage uh, to the front end of the car. He was unrestrained. Apparently, he was unresponsive at the scene. Uh, we intubated him. 
Uh, he does have some vintage breast sounds on the left side with uh, with a um, a um, some rib fractures, and also he's also got um, it's also got what appears to be a pulmonary contusion. He's also got bleeding from uh, a scalp wound. He's got an open femur fracture on the left side. We've immobilized it. He's also got a pelvic fracture. We've got him in a pelvic sling right now. We've given him two liters of uh, fluid. He's got two units of blood. His blood pressure right now is 100 over, uh, 110 over 50. His uh, heart rate is 110. And uh, we've got him intubated on 100% oxygen with 98% saturation. Yeah, I think uh, that he probably needs to come by air. Uh, so if we can make the arrangements to send the helicopter, I'd appreciate it. And I will package him up. I'll send some blood products and we'll send the x-rays as well. And we'll await uh, your arrival. In the meantime, uh, I'll get some x-rays of, uh, of his femur and uh, everything else, but we won't delay his transport. Any other questions? No? Thanks. Thank you very much.